AP Calc BC, unit one, review corrective for the graphing calculator section. So let's see, let's go ahead and do this. Are you ready? So first problem is just all about making sure you enter things into your calculator correctly. You definitely are gonna need parentheses around the top. Around the bottom, there's multiple terms. Two thirds probably don't need parentheses around that ahead of time. But, um, so you probably could just do two thirds like that. And then parentheses five plus 20 to the one fourth power. Now you could do 0 0.2, 0 0.25 power, one fourth. But if you do one fourth, you need to put parentheses around it, around the exponent. Close parentheses around the top, divide by parentheses one minus two e squared can be done a lot of different ways. You could do it like that. You could do it like that. No, different ways. Probably another couple ways too. Answer is negative 0.344 round trunk A3 decimal place accuracy. All right, next one. Find the minimum value of this graph. So we're going to graph it. 2x to the third minus 10x squared minus 20x plus 40. And go to the window. Now it says 0 to 10, so I guess we could say 0 to 10. And we could try zoom fit, zoom 0. But sometimes the graph gets really big and kind of blows up. So that's, that looks pretty big right here. Now, we're looking for the minimum, which is right here. So we could probably resize this graph just so we see the minimum and just a little more up here, just to see it a little better. So I'm going to go down here and say, well, it went all the way to negative 72. So we say like negative 80 to positive 80. That might be a little easier to look at. So I want to sketch. Kind of indicate that, oh, we're looking at 0 to 10. You don't really need to have the y-axis or anything, but I feel like that this is kind of important. Okay, so we're looking for this. This is the min. So you could label on your picture, but um, second calc, number three, minimum. You got to tell where to look for it. It looks like it's at one, two, three. It looks like it's around four. So we say like three to five, guess four. And it is... 4.138733 comma negative 72.28014. Your answer is going to be the minimum value of f of x is negative 72.280 at x equals 4.138, or you can say 4.139 if you want. <clears throat> find the intersections of these graphs. Now there's two ways we could do this. We could actually graph them, find the intersections, or we could move every, we could set them equal to each other, move everything on one side, graph one equation, find sex intercepts. So which is probably what I would often do. Now the first equation is the same, that's convenient. So negative x squared plus six x. Uh, we're looking everywhere. So I don't know, we just start with this negative 10 to 10. Now the first one is cubic, that's the cubic. The second one's a upside down parabola. There's upside down parabola. So, one, two, three intersections. So you should feel confident there are no more because problems keep going down, keep keep going up. So draw a sketch of it. <clears throat> so cubic kind of looks like that. Parabola looks something like that. Okay, so we're looking for this, this, and this. 
So second calculate, uh, intersect, first curve, second curve, there's only two curves. And then you gotta give it a guess. Uh, I'm gonna say negative three. And so that one is negative 2.776509 comma negative 24.36805. So you can calculate number five intersect first curve is seven curve looks like there's one around x equals one 1.1819148 comma 5.6945661 second calculate number five intersect first curve second curve one two three four five six Six point zero nine four five nine four, comma negative zero point five seven six five one two two. All right, so then we'll write our answers down. <clears throat> our answers are negative two point seven seven six, or negative two point seven seven seven, comma negative twenty four point. 368, round trunk is the same. That's one. Next one is 1.181, or it could be 1.182, if you round it, comma, 5.694, which could also be 5.695. Next one is 6.094 which could also be 6.095 if you really want, and negative 0 0.576, or negative 0 0.577. <clears throat> okay, there we go, we need sketches. Okay, solve graphically. Now you could graph two graphs, which uh, I would not recommend. I'd move everything one side. I think it's uh, a lot easier. Hard to mess up. So I just graph cubic. I mean, you could do the two separate ones and you gotta figure out where's the cubic above the line. Here, if you just do the cubic, you're saying where's the cubic above the x-axis, which is a lot easier to identify. But that's up to you. X to the third, minus seven X, minus two, window. Uh, we don't really know yet. Now here's Here's the deal. We don't really need to see. Oh, yeah. Let's try it. So that's cubic. Ah, oh, that's pretty good. Kind of want to see the whole cubic. So I'm going to draw a sketch. <clears throat> and it kind of looks like that. <clears throat> and we want to know where is it above or equal to the x axis. So solid dots. And above or equal to. So that is your answer, and that's your answer. So um, we got to find those x intercepts. So second, calculate zero. Got to tell where to look. One, two, it looks like negative 2.5. So we'll say negative three to negative two, I guess negative 2.5. So negative 2.5. Four eight nine two eight nine comma zero pretty much one e the negative twelve is uh, <laughs> eleven twelve zeros or eleven zeros before the first one. Okay, second count zero looks like there's one close to maybe negative point five so I say negative one to one guess zero. Negative zero point two eight nine one six eight five and second calc zero. Looks like it's almost around three, so I'll say two to four, guess three. Two point seven seven eight four five seven one comma zero. Okay, so now we need to write our answer in interval notation. So it's gonna be bracket negative two point 
four eight nine comma negative zero point two eight nine bracket union bracket two point seven seven eight comma positive infinity parenthesis. <coughs> You get the same answer if you graph them both, but in this problem it wouldn't be that bad. In other problems it will. For this graph, find the area bounded by the coordinate axis and the tangent line to the curve of x equals two. Now, a lot of these it might be good to start sketching it. Like, I mean, I don't know. This is a pretty basic rational function. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. It has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Um, you plug positives in. It's gonna be over here. Negatives and it's going to be over here. And we're looking for the tangent line at two. So something like that, the area right here. So even without using my calculator, I have a pretty good idea what I should be getting. But you could graph it. Three over X. Window, mm, window negative five to five. Okay. Now, to get the equation of the tangent line, quickest, easiest way is to do a second program draw. Number five, tangent. Type in the value of the x value where you want it. Draws it in. And gives the equation at the bottom of the screen. So let's write the equation down. y equals negative 0 0.75000018 75x plus... 3.00000. Now, you definitely need more than three decimal accuracy because we're in the middle of the work and we need this to calculate a uh, future value. So, now you put in your equation, you have to type it in. Maybe. <clears throat> and then graph it. You're not going to see anything different because graphing it right on top of the other graph. But now you can actually use your calculator to help you, you, you know, just a couple ways we could do this. You've got to find the heights right here. That's uh, 3.00000, right? And this, you got to find this x coordinate. So you can do that on here. You can say second calc, zero. Now, you don't want the x coordinate of this, you want the x coordinate of that line. So up or down. Uh, you gotta tell it where to look for it. It looks like it's around four, so I'm gonna say three to five, guess four. And it tells me that it is 3.9999999. So we could do area of a triangle equals one half base times height equals one half times 399999 times height, which is 3.00000, and calculate. Or we could do an integral from zero to 3.999999 of our tangent line. Gotta show the setup though. So we could do that. These should both give the same answer. Um, so, I mean, on the calculator, you could do second calc, number seven. You don't want to integrate the rational function. You want to integrate the tangent line that you entered in. Type zero and then 3.99999. Shades it in, and we get 5.9999985. Other way, we could do. 0.5 times 3.999999 times 3 equals 5.9999985. Same answer. Final answer, three decimal accuracy. So just 5.999 or 6.000. <clears throat> okay, uh, F average. So this is that idea that we talked about last year. If you have a function, you want to find the average height between two points. That's, you know, the average height. So the strategy is take the area in the curve, level it out as a flat surface. It's going to look like rectangle. Now that height of that is your average height. 
So our strategy here is to say, okay, well, if we integrate our function from A to B, that will give you the area under the original curve, which is also the area of the rectangle. And then if you divide it by the base of the rectangle, that should give you the height, which is F average. So we don't memorize that equation. It's just a quick, simple idea that kind of makes sense. So for us, F average, you got to show this up, is 1 over 7 minus 2, integral 7 to 2 of x squared plus 10 dx. That's the setup. You don't put the parentheses, taking off points. Don't put the dx, taking off points. Now, we don't need to graph this. So probably you could, but it'd probably be easier to just do it on your graphing category saying. So if you say 1 divided by 5, math 9, x squared plus 10, comma, x, comma, 2, comma, 7, depending on your calculator, enter, and we get 32.333. <clears throat> okay, parametrics. You don't even need to know about parametrics, but it's two-dimensional motion. We'll be studying it. We'll be studying in depth in its whole own unit. But for now, you can just treat this problem like problems from last year. Dx dt, well, take the derivative. So, you know, uh, let's see dx dt equals 1 minus 2 cosine t, and you want it to be greater than or equal to 0. So it's really just trig inequality. So you'd want to solve for the root cosine t equals, uh, subtract 1, pause 1 half. Now you can do, you possibly do this by hand, unless I give you one that doesn't have nice answers. So I guess let's pretend it doesn't have nice answers. So if it doesn't have nice answers, we're just going to graph this and see where is it above zero. I mean, so we would say 1 minus 2 cosine x. Make sure you're in radian mode. So we just type that in. Window, well, we're just looking from 0 to 3 pi. So 0 to 3 pi. And we could do zoom fit if you want. And draw a sketch of it. Otherwise, you got to do a line check if you do it by hand. But like I said, I might give you one that you can't really do without a calculator. So this is probably your best strategy. I mean, you can still pull off a line check by hand, but this is, this is I think, a lot, a lot easier if you have to use a calculator at all. So we're saying, where is it greater than or equal to zero? So it's going to be this chunk of the graph. And this chunk of the graph. So we just got to find those x-intercepts. Second calc, 0. Looks like there's one at 1, 0, 2, guess 1. So that one's at 1 1.047976. 0. Looks like a 2, 3, 4, 5, around 5. 4 to 6, guess 5. 5.2359878. So we calc zero. Um, I was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like 7.5. So seven to eight, guess 7.5. <clears throat> 7 7.3303829. So your answer, interval notation, would be. 1.047 comma 5.235 brackets union bracket 7.330 comma 3 pi. Um, so uh, dy dt is just take derivative, you know. Negative 2 sine t, and it needs to be less than or equal to 0. Now, this would be a simple one to do by hand, but let's just pretend that it isn't. So you go to your calculator, and you type your equation in. Windows 0 to 3 pi, we do zoom fit. 
sketch graph, find the zeros, right here on zero. Um, so we're going all the way to three pi. Now we could uh, mark that. The graph kind of goes like this. Looks like it goes all the way back there. So four equals two, it's gonna be solid dots. Does it actually get here? That's the question. Well, or does it get here before three pi? And do we need to cut it off before that? Less than or equal to, so this is the part below. So uh, be careful, don't assume that, that that's right on three pi. Second calc, zero. Uh, looks like there's one around three. It's probably pi, but uh, two to four, guess three. 3.1415927. So I guess with what I was saying, make sure there's a zero over here. Let's see if there is. Uh, second, calculate zero. I'm gonna guess zero to one, guess zero. And there is, it says there's one at zero. If there wasn't, um, <clears throat> then that means you would go all the way to zero anyways, because that means the graph never intersected, but it would be below it. Second calc, zero, three, four, five, six, around six, five to seven, guess six, six point two eight three one eight five three, and then second calc, zero let's check all the way over here now that's three pi the edge is three pi the six seven eight nine so we can say like nine to three pi guess three pi and it gives us a value nine point four two four seven seven eight all right so the answer interval notation will be bracket 0 0.000 comma 3.141 union <clears throat> bracket 6.283 <clears throat> comma 9.424 <clears throat> could have done those ones by hand without a calculator at all but maybe not on test okay let's do better on that graphing carrier for the test for the retest <clears throat>